The Syrian conflict morphed from a civil war into a proxy war for outside powers, and now after seven years of fighting, it looks as if it's entering a new, possibly final phase. Three years ago, the Russian military entered Syria to ensure President Assad couldn't lose. This has led on to him being close to being able to claim a victory of sorts. A guide to the future was seen at the latest peace talks in Sochi. Russia, Iran and Turkey were represented. After all, they're busy carving up Syria. The government and political opposition were present, as was the UN, albeit only as observers. Not invited, delegates for the armed opposition, which is losing power. On the military front, the Assad regime, with Russian, Iranian and Hezbollah backing, has regained most key areas of the country, including the cities. Recently, government forces have pushed opponents out of pockets in the south. Next, they will try to recapture Idlib in the north. This would bring them dangerously close to the Turkish army, which occupies the Afrin region. To the northeast, Syria's Kurds control a swathe of territory in which American forces operate. The military map is the political map. The Kurds have even been for a meeting in Damascus, talking about charting a road map to a democratic and decentralized Syria. But President Assad talks about retaking every inch of Syria. A compromise would be a semi-autonomous region. This would avoid fighting for the territory, but these are early days in the end game. Despite that, Russia, in an attempt to prove that normal life is returning, is pushing plans to force hundreds of thousands of refugees to return home, saying they have nothing to fear from Assad's government. Most refugees resist the idea, concerned about revenge and the men having to serve in the army. The UN is not involved in the plans and warns against forced returns. The shape of Syria's future is emerging, mostly government controlled, but with pockets of instability, a capital in Damascus, but heavily influenced by Moscow and Tehran, possibly a Turkish controlled area, and in one form or another, a Kurdish dominated region. If so, a country called Syria would have survived, but could it really call itself a sovereign nation state?